the OpenAI GPT store is here. It's something that OpenAI promised a couple of months back and it is live today. At least that's what they're saying. It is not yet live for me. But in this video, we're going to see every single thing that we know about the GPT store. Now, if you're not familiar with GPTs, I've got a separate video where I've made a tutorial how to create your own GPTs. Please check it out. But just in a nutshell, GPTs are like this tiny, small apps that you can create on top of ChatGPT Plus and you can share it with anybody. And uh, that means you can share it with people that you want or you can share it with the entire Internet. When you want to share it with the entire Internet, OpenAI decided to put that into a store just like App Store. So they've taken this concept of App Store and uh, they've said, OK, what if we take all the GPTs that are shared publicly by these people and then start featuring them? And that is exactly what the GPT store is. GPT store is supposed to look like this, where you have got like the featured picks, the trending picks, the top picks and specific themes and all these things that are built by the community or in this case, OpenAI is calling them builders. So that are built by the builders and that is available for everybody to use. And if you want your GPT to be available for everybody in the GPT store, it's very simple. The first thing that you need to do is you need to, first of all, you need to have the ChatGPT plus subscription. Once you have ChatGPT plus subscription, after you create the GPTs, you have to go to one of these GPTs. And then after you go to one of these GPTs, for example, if this is a GPT that I have created, you can see 30 plus chats have been made and it is already available for everyone. So I can click edit GPT here and on the top right, you can see the save button. And once you see everyone, you can see this message appearing that says this GPT may appear in the GPT store coming soon. That means once you make it available for everybody to use, OpenAI will index this as part of their GPT store. And if your GPT is like mind blowing, amazing, or like a lot of people love it, then the chance of OpenAI featuring this or this appearing on trending section is high. Once you're done with that, the next thing that you need to do is you need to verify your builder profile. Go to your profile, click settings and better, click builder profile. And here your name will be displayed, which is from your billing details. And you can select a domain like you can select, select a domain, verify a new domain, give some kind of domain name. For example, I can say openai.com, openai.com, submit, and it will say, okay, add this to as a TXT record to your DNS. So this is to make sure that only you own this domain so that, you know, I cannot like go on adding openai.com. So ultimately this will get displayed when you have like a GPT here, this will ending up getting displayed here with your name and the website, like the hyperlinked website. It's quite interesting to see how they're uh, going about this. So they're again calling this as a builder profile. So they want you to end up creating or building these GPTs, sharing this publicly. Now you might ask the most important question. Why on earth would I create a GPT and then let it available on the internet for anybody to use? First of all, GPTs are already extremely popular. I'm not sure like how many people use it day to day. I don't have like MAU numbers like monthly active users or daily active users. But a lot of people I know personally use GPTs for certain purpose. Like you have a translated GPT or you have like a framework, HTML2 framework, something like that. You have a coding GPT, you have like a doctor GPT. So people have created this custom GPTs that would easily give them a set of uh, properties for the chat GPT that you want to chat with so that you don't have to do the system context setting every time. So this is one reason. The second reason is GPTs are also capable of taking a document and answering from this. So you have like a rag system. And the third reason is GPTs can do like API calls, which is not easily possible otherwise. So for these reasons, people end up building GPTs. Now, what is the incentive for somebody to share the GPT on the internet so that OpenAI can index it? And that is where OpenAI has done exactly what Apple has managed to do, which is GPT builders who share their GPTs public can earn based on GPT usage. So they've got an upcoming revenue sharing plan, which is still not available, 
but in the Q1, we will launch GPT Builder Revenue Program. And as usual with so many other things, US based builders will be paid based on user engagement with their GPTs. What does this user engagement mean? And uh, how many users, how many GPTs owners will be paid? And what kind of revenue sharing? None of these details have been shared by OpenAI. We will provide additional details on criteria for payments as we get closer. So it almost seems like they have they have not like 100% finalized it yet at least because if it is available, they should have at least shared at this point. But the point here is that they want people to build GPTs. They want GPTs to go viral and they want GPTs. Uh, there is an incentive for the creators or builders to build GPTs and available it on the chat GPT platform. This is something that they think probably would become like the app store of the GPTs where anybody can build any GPT that they want and make it easily available. And this is also another easy way for them to make people keep on paying for the chat GPT plus subscription. So this way, uh, for example, like even though you love using open source language models or open local language models, you would still end up paying for chat GPT plus subscription because one of the GPTs that you like or somebody you like has created a GPT and then you would want to use it. So this is something that um, looks nice at the start, but I'm definitely looking forward to see how this is going to take off and how this is going to go. So you can go access chatgpt chat.openai.com slash GPTs. At this point of recording this video, it is still not available for me. When I go there, I don't see the GPT store, but not sure like because it is, is it from, uh, because is it that I'm in India or uh, it's just like part of AB test. I'm not really sure why it is not available for me. Or at least OpenAI is saying that starting today, it is available for everybody. ChatGPT Plus, ChatGPT team and enterprise users to use the GPT store. And according to them, the GPT store are going to have highly impactful and useful GPTs. Let's figure out how that is going to happen. But they've got a bunch of GPTs already featured like Khan Academy's code tutor, design presentations for social media with Canva. So they've got like a bunch of things like this. But this is not the only announcement that OpenAI made. So this is useful if you want to make money. Let's say you want to create GPTs and get some revenue. And this is also useful if you want to see how this whole OpenAI ecosystem thing is going to play out. But OpenAI also made one more announcement, which they're calling us the ChatGPT team. So ChatGPT team is nothing but a ChatGPT for your own team. So instead of paying for one user, you're going to end up paying for everybody in the team. And each user, you can pay $30 if you pay monthly, or if you pay annually, you are going to pay $25 per month per user. Now, why would you pay extra $5 for a chat GPT or extra $10 for chat GPT, which uh, you could have already used separately? The answer to the question is very simple. If you use chat GPT team, first of all, there is no training on your business data or conversations. You have a secure workspace for your team and you can share GPTs only within your workspace and you got an admin console for workspace and team management. I honestly feel that this is going to be a huge hit and they've also shared some research paper that was, uh, that was done as part of Harvard Business School, how people using GPT ended up producing more work like quality work, knowledge work. So it, it, it seems like no brainer for business to use it. A lot of companies already have uh, enabled some, some kind of way for their employees to use chat GPT. And the fact that OpenAI is openly promising that there'll not be any training on business data or conversations will increase the uh, trust or increase the trustworthiness of these companies. They have also linked it to the privacy page and the trust portal for companies to trust OpenAI that they will not do any kind of training, model training, use the data for whenever you use with ChatGPT team. And also along with that, it comes with the regular ChatGPT plus uh, advantages you have got, the GPT-4 with 34, 32K context window, you've got DALI-3, GPT-4 vision, browsing, advanced data analysis or something that they 
used to call code interpreter. Now all these features with also the team collaboration is available right now. So OpenAI has made these two announcements. One is the ChatGPT team, the other one is the GPT store. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to see how the GPT store is going to play out, especially in terms of like revenue sharing. What is the uh, like the cut that they are going to do? Everybody knows that uh, Apple has got its own revenue sharing cut. Google Play Store has got its own revenue sharing cut. And you know, creating these kind of ecosystems are not really easy. Like you've got a lot of uh, things that you need to take care of when you have a marketplace like this. So I'm looking forward to see what OpenAI is going to do. And will we have ultimately a paywalled or like for example, a Stripe integrated GPT that would ultimately probably become like a micro SaaS. I'm definitely looking forward to see how this space is going to pan out. But at least at this point, here is the GPT store that OpenAI promised. Let's see how this is going to pan out. See you in another video. Happy prompting.